Hi everyone, I'm Jackie and today I will be covering the most missed questions on August 2024 SAT. Hopefully this gets you ready for those of you taking the exam October and you know anyone who's taking it beyond. I think these videos can be helpful. Okay, so first question and by the way this did appear on August SAT um, and it's very similar to the a question found in blue book exam five or six. Okay, so a rectangle is inscribed in a circle such that each vertex of the rectangle lies on the circumference of the circle. Okay, so I have a circle and I have a rectangle inscribed in that circle. Something like that. The diagonal of the rectangle is twice the length of the shortest side of the rectangle. Okay, so I'll make this X, this would be two X. And the area of the rectangle, it's 900 root three square units. What is the length in units of the diameter of the circle? Okay, so I know area equals length times width. Um, and that's going to be, so let's label this other side A. So I can say A times X is equal to 900 root three. Likewise, I can use Pythagorean theorem and do a squared plus x squared is equal to 2x squared. Careful here, you want to be sure to distribute the exponent to both the 2 and the x. So that would give me a squared plus x squared is equal to 4x squared. a squared is equal to 3x squared. You take the square root, so a would be equal to x root 3. Okay, so now that I know what a is equal to, I can now go back to our original formula here and I can substitute this in for the a because that will give me the value of x. So let's go ahead and do that. So that would be x root 3 times x is equal to 900 root 3. And then I would have x squared root 3 is equal to 900 root 3. Divide each side by root 3. I'll just show all the steps, do, 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 do. So I get that x squared is equal to 900. Final step, take the square root. That will be x is equal to 30. And final step is um, go back always and read the question. It does say, what is the length in units of the diameter of the circle? That would correlate to 2x. So final step would be to do 2 times 30, which is 60. And that would be our amazing answer. How amazing. Okay, more geometry. In a convex pentagon, A, B, C, D, E, segment A, B is parallel to segment D. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna make like this and this my parallel lines. Mm -hmm. And since it's, oh, it's convex, so we'll say this would be like C. Okay, so I would just make this, um, just kidding, I would do A, B, C, and then D, E. Okay, because, and we see like, right, this A, B, it's parallel to line segment D, E. Okay, and then the measure of angle B is 139 degrees. The measure of angle D is 174 degrees. Um, what is the measure of angle C? Okay, so when you get these problems on the exam, I think the simplest way, whenever you see parallel lines, you can think of a transversal being cut through the lines. So for example, if I extend the lines out here, I'll just make it, for example, like this, my transversal. And two parallel lines cut through transversal, this would tell me that, um, this is a, this is a, right? And this will also be a, a. Likewise, this is my E angle. This would be E, and this would also be E, and this would also be E. Why am I doing that? Because I can see very clearly, right, that E plus A is definitely equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so final step also, to get the interior angles of a pentagon, I can just do n minus two, n for the amount of sides of the polygon times 180. That would be five minus two times 180. 
three times 180. The total um, interior angles of the pentagon sum to 540 degrees. Final step, I would put, you know, A plus B plus C plus D plus E is equal to 540. I know um, A and E are 180 degrees. I have angle B, 139, plus angle D, 174, plus C, 540. And then sum them all together. <laughs> so 493 plus C equals 540. Subtract out 493 from each side, and I get that C is equal to 47, and that would be my amazing answer. So a convex pentagon is just a normal looking pentagon. Um, I suppose they could do concave pentagon, which would look like this. Five-sided, but, you know, indented on top. Okay, so, you know, language. Okay, continuing our amazing journey. Oh my goodness. Um, a right square pyramid has a total surface area of 36,864 square inches, and the combined surface area of the four lateral faces of the pyramid is 20,480 square inches. What is the height in inches of this pyramid? Okay. Okay. I just drew this out to give us a little better visual, but um, important that it does tell us that it's a right square pyramid, which means that the base is a square. Okay, so this is what it looks like in 3D. And imagine if you were to fold out all the sides, the lateral faces of the pyramid, it would look like this. Okay, so it says it has a total surface area of 36,864 inches. Um, okay, so if I want to calculate the total surface area, um, that would just be like the total surface area. Let me write. So total surface area would be equal to the area of the base. So the total square base here. Area of square base. And then it would plus the area of those four, these four, um, lateral faces. Triangular faces. Okay, so I know the total surface area, it's 36,864. I don't know the area of the square base, that's what I'm going to solve for. Um, and I know that the four lateral faces, it's 20,480. So now subtract out the 20,480 from each side. So that gives me 16,384. So this is the area of the square base, which I'm now going to identify as S squared, right? Dirt. And then I can take the square root of this and oh my goodness, it goes in perfectly. Um, it is 128 inches. Okay, so that tells me that this is 128, this whole base, it's 128, this is 128. Likewise, like this is 128, 128, 128, and, and so on. Okay, so now I know that. So our next mission is that I want to find the slant height, and the slant height would be, what I drew here in purple, the height of each of the four lateral faces. And I can do that pretty easily because I know that the area, we'll say of one triangular face will be base times height divided by two. And I have the um, knowledge of the four triangular lateral faces. So if I wanted to get the area of one triangular um, face, I would do 20,480 divided by four. So dividing this by four, 20,480 divided by four, 
that gives me 500, 5,120. So that's the total area of just one of these triangular faces. And then I can be like, okay, so base times height, um, the base, it's 128, height is what I'm solving for, divided by two is equal to 5,120, and let's solve for a p height. That gives me that the height is 80. So that means each one of these slant heights, it's 80, 80, and 80. Okay, and I wanna get the overall height of the pyramid. Okay, so now let's look here. I know that this is 80. The height that I wanna get, this would come out from here. So comes down to the center and here would be the other side of the triangle. And as you can see, I've just created a right triangle. So final step is to do Pythagorean theorem. Um, so this would be 128 divided by two, 64. And I know this, the slant height, becomes the hypotenuse of this triangle. And then final step, I'm gonna say like height squared plus 64 squared is equal to hypotenuse 80 squared. And let's see, 64 times 64. So height squared plus 4,896 is equal to 6,400. Subtract out the 4,096 from each side. Height squared is equal to 2,304. Take the square root, and that will give me the height. So height is equal to 48. And that correlates to option A. Okay, so um, I've heard of a lot of triangular prisms or right square pyramids appearing on the SAT, so this would be good to know. I hope this was useful and it helps you see with the visuals here as well. Okay, let's continue on to another amazing problem. Ooh, the perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 642 centimeters. Okay. Um, the three vertices of the triangle lie on a circle. The radius of the circle is W root three centimeters. What is the value of W? So if the three vertices of the rectangle or of the triangle lie on the circle, that means that this equilateral triangle is inscribed in the circle. So look something like this but with the angle inside. But so we have 60, 60, 60. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna do 642 divided by three because that will tell me the length of each side. So each side in this rectangular, or sorry, equilateral triangle, it's 214. Okay, so interesting things about equilateral triangles. Um, an equilateral triangle, it actually consists of three other triangles, so three isosceles triangles, like so. And we can see that these triangles that I'm creating inside, this is um, this would be considered the radius. So when you take the middle point from the circle and extend it to each of the vertices of the equilateral triangle, this will be the radius. So this is the radius, this is the radius, and this is the radius. Okay, so looking at this triangle, remember too, when you cut an equilateral triangle in half, you create two 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay, so first let's look at that. So this would be 60, this would be um, 30, and we can see here that this is 30, this would be 30, that will come in handy later. Okay, so labeling the, the main pink triangle in here. This is x, this is x root three, and this is 2x. So first, I know that here it would be 107. 
and the total height here would be 107 root 3. Okay. Okay, so I know this is 107 root 3. Each of these is 107. But you see now I've created a, another, I'm going to make this one blue. This is another 30, 60, 90 triangle. But since I cut it here, this has become now, this is 30 degrees. So here, that blue triangle, it's now 30, the 30 degrees is here. So it's actually flipped on its side. This is X, this is X root three. And the radius, which I want to find, is equal to 2x. So I know that x root 3 in this case is equal to 107. To get x, I'm going to divide each side by root 3. I'm going to rationalize out the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by root 3. This will just simplify to 107 root 3 over 3. So that's what x is equal to which would correspond to this blue part here in the equilateral triangle. So, and remember I said that the radius is equal to 2x. And final step, I just need to do 2 times, I'll put in blue, 107 root 3 divided by 3. And this will tell me the radius of the circle, which is equal to um, back to 214 root 3 divided by 3. And this is all equal to w root 3. So I can see like my w value is just 214 divided by 3. And that would be, you know, the answer to that problem. Wasn't that so amazing? So great. <laughs> Um, journey of the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, continue our journey. So this one here, um, I've also seen very similar ones on Blue Book exam five or six. Some students reported that they had this question, very similar on the exam. So the function f is defined by f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. The graph of y equals f of x in the xy plane passes through the points nine, zero, and negative two zero if a is an integrated one which of the following could be the value of a plus b okay so here um i can see that y equals zero these are the x intercepts of the parabola so to solve this i can use the formula for roots um remember roots formula it's a x minus root one multiplied by x minus root two so in this case, it'd be a x minus nine and x plus two. Why is it opposite signs? Because x minus nine equals zero, x equals nine, x minus x plus two equals zero and x equals negative two. So that's why I put the opposite signs of what we see in the output. Next, I will expand the bracket. So that gives me x squared minus seven x minus 18. Final step is to distribute the a to everything to put it into standard form. So I have ax squared minus 7ax minus 18a. And then I'm asked for could be the value of a plus b. I know a equals a. b is equal to negative 7a and c is equal to negative 18a. How do I know that? This is ax squared plus bx plus c. So a plus b would be equal to a minus 7a, which is equal to negative 6a. Okay, so that's the value. That's probably why C is there to serve as a trap. But important, it says that if A is an integer greater than one, what's the next integer greater than one? Two. So it's possible that A is equal to two and negative six is equal to negative 12. Of course, it's also possible that like it could be three, it could be four, A could be four and so on. However, you see it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Our only viable option then is correct answer choice, D, negative 12. Amazing. Okay, so these are five questions that were considered hard or advanced, appeared on module two of the August digital SAT. Make sure you know these concepts. 
I would know all of them. Um, if you had difficulty with any of them, reinforce by doing more practice problems. I'll release another set of problems that were difficult and advanced that appeared on August SAT. And stay tuned also for English coming soon as well. Okay, hope this video is helpful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. And like, rate, and subscribe if you like this video. Bye guys, see you in the next video.